The BMW 93 is the company's electric SUVs and an alternative to the Audi e-tron, Mercedes EQC, Ford Mustang Mach-E and Skoda Enyaq, it's the BMW equivalent of the Monsters Inc. story. Until now, the company has used scary old petrol and diesel to generate power, but now they've found out that laugh a minute electricity actually works a whole lot better for everybody and makes you smile, too, so the 93 is new, but just doesn't look it. Up front, there's the usual BMW grille, but it's all a clever ruse because it doesn't have to cool an engine, so it has been sealed to help reduce drag and give the car's range a small boost. A dimpled pattern breaks up what would otherwise be a big sheet of black plastic. The 20-inch wheels are unique to the BMW 93, too. Their heavily sculpted design helps to smooth airflow along the side of the car, improving range, although they look exceptionally vulnerable to curbing, assorted blue highlights to designate the electric model dotted around the 93, most obviously on the rear bumper where you'd normally spot some exhaust pipes, finish off the styling changes. There are also blue highlights around the grille, the badges, and the sills. Under the skin is a solitary 286 horsepower electric motor that also generates 400 newton meters of torque and drives the rear wheels. There's an 80 kilowatt hour battery pack that should give a range of up to 285 miles. That's according to the latest official testing procedure. That's a bit more than key alternatives such as the Audi e-tron and Mercedes-Benz EQC, but a bit less than the Jaguar I-Pace. In the real world it will be a bit below that, especially in cold, wet conditions, the 93 should be compatible with almost every kind of charging station or power outlet, including super-fast 150 kilowatts chargers, which can give an 80% recharge in just 34 minutes. This means you can add 60-ish miles of range in about 10 minutes. There aren't many 150 kilowatts chargers in the UK, but the network is growing, charging from less powerful outlets such as a home wallbox charger or 3-pin plug will take longer, BMW reckons a full charge from empty will take around 12 hours. While electricity prices have risen lately, they're not rising as fast as the cost of petrol or diesel, so an electric 93 will still be much cheaper to run than a conventional X3, all electric cars feature brake regeneration, a system that uses the electric motor as an extra brake that can feed energy back to the batteries that would otherwise be lost as the car slows down. This always happens when you press the brake pedal, but the 93 joins many of the latest electric cars by giving the system the ability to bring you to a stop when you lift off the accelerator pedal, too. It allows for one pedal driving, which, once you're used to it, is an extremely relaxing way of dealing with urban traffic. It's not the fastest version of the X3, but it's still pretty quick with a 0 to 60 mph time of 6.8 seconds. Top speed is limited to 112 mph, which helps to preserve range. It's more than enough for UK drivers, anyway, the first thing you notice when you get out and about in your 93 is how quiet it is. There's no noise from the engine and transmission, so you only notice a little wind and road noise as your speed rises, adaptive suspension is fitted to the 93 as standard, so it's pretty comfortable, although a Mercedes EQC still trumps it for out and out ride quality. However, the suspension stops the iX3's body from rolling too much during cornering. The 93 grips strongly, too, and its handling is doubtless helped by the fact that the batteries are stored in the floor. Lowering the center of gravity. Flicking the suspension into sport model firm things up a lot, to the extent that it makes the ride too firm, but it certainly sharpens the handling and gives the 93 a distinctly sporty feel, all 93s are well equipped. The entry-level M Sport comes with a 12.3-inch digital driver's display and 12.3-inch touchscreen infotainment system, wireless phone charging, electrically adjustable leather seats, adaptive suspension, which lets you choose between soft, comfortable settings and stiffer, sportier ones, and a panoramic glass roof. The top-spec M Sport Pro Car has a Harman Kardon audio system, a head-up display and an automatic parking system. The 93 seems well-priced against other electric SUVs. For example, the Mercedes-Benz EQC costs around £5,000 more in basic trim. The 93 costs pretty much exactly the same as a Jaguar I-Pace, with similar overall range, so that's fine too. The problems start to mount up when you compare it to a Tesla Model Y or an Audi Q4 e-tron. Now, theoretically these are smaller cars, but both have cabin space on a par with the 93, and both can be bought for less cash, and with a longer range, does the 93 line up to Audi's bigger, grander e-tron Quattro SUV?
Kind of, but that's arguably closer to BMW's pricier iX. It's also worth noting that the Kia EV6 and Hyundai Ioniq 5 are both roomier inside than the 9.3, but much cheaper. Think a Hyundai or Kia can't compete with a BMW? Think again, both have more range. And both have gorgeous, high-tech cabins around town and at lower speeds, the 9.3 is very, very relaxing and easy to drive. As with most electric cars, noise levels are kept well under control. By knocking the gear selector to the left, you can put the 9.3 into B mode which ramps up the regenerative braking, slowing you down without using the physical brakes, which is handy in city driving. In fact, B mode will actually bring the car to a complete stop without touching the brake pedal if you have enough space, proper one pedal driving. The turning circle is okay, nothing special, but it's fine, and the steering is nicely light so it's pretty easy to maneuver. The suspension. With the adaptive dampers, rides bumps nicely but it's a touch firm compared to the likes of the Mercedes EQC. It's about the same as the Jag I-Pace, though. One annoying thing, the brakes often make an irritating squeaky groan noise, like someone's reclining in an old rocking chair. The refinement continues when you take the 9.3 up onto the motorway, although you'll start to notice a bit more tire roar and wind noise, but it never gets really out of hand. The sheer grunt of the iX3 single rear-wheel drive electric motor helps when you're joining a fast-moving motorway as it rockets from 40 miles per hour up to 70 miles per hour, and the well-tuned suspension means it'll cling on firmly on a long, curving on-ramp. The EQC and Audi e-tron are, again, a little bit quieter than the BMW, but there's not a massive gap, the 9.3 is really, properly quick. Other EVs with two-motor, four-wheel drive systems might be able to scamper to 62 miles per hour faster, but the BMW lives up to its on-paper 6.8 seconds time, in fact, it might even beat that as we were able to get to 60 miles per hour in just under 6.0 seconds, speed is one thing, control is another, but the 9.3 is all over that. The battery pack is mounted low down in the car's floor, so its center of gravity is actually lower than that of a standard diesel or petrol X3, meaning you can chuck it around with plenty of confidence. The steering has pretty good weight and feel. And that firms up if you put it in sport mode, but the trouble is so too does the suspension, and then things just get a bit too bumpy, better to leave it in comfort mode, to be honest. It's still engaging to drive even then, although it doesn't quite have the hooligan tendencies of the Ford Mustang Mach-E. It also won't slide and skid about, in spite of being rear-wheel drive, try to do that and it just kind of understeers like a big electric lump. Even so, it does get BMW's newish traction control system, where the control module is mounted directly to the electric motor so that it can react faster and more accurately any time you start to lose traction. That said, you're not going to be getting very far off-road with just rear-wheel drive and a ride height that loses 2 centimeters compared to the standard X3.